Super 7's garbage and you should stop, you're wasting your money, blah, blah, blah. Hello, I'm Justin. And I'm Kyle. And that was very enthusiastic. Oh, sorry. You're usually like, and I'm Kyle. You are ready to jump into I'm, this I'm, one. Let's go. You have a lot of strong opinions. I yes, see. these are toys. <laughs> They are here on Kyle, the desk. Kyle's here with the expert facts about mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. We are the Mirror Twins and we are going to talk about Super 7. <laughs> are they worth it? What do you think? We had another video where we talked about these cheaper retail available like mainstream toys like uh, the Hasbro stuff. They're kind of killing it. Mm -hmm. And Mattel, they're kind of killing it with their He-Man classics. The G.I. Joe classified. The, the G.I. Joe classifieds. They're killing it with the retail stuff we have these expensive high-end high paint adult collector oriented I would argue that the Mattel and Hasbro stuff are adult collector oriented as well they are they're just not as expensive we have due to several reasons due to several reasons which we'll touch on in this video a little bit go watch that other video if you want to hear kind of our opinions and the link to that video is in the description I kind of gave super 7 kind of negative view I feel like in that video because for several reasons they tend to be less posable they tend to be a, a good bit more expensive if our retail stuff is around what our Hasbro Mattel stuff off oh, the 25. shelf 25 sometimes 30 unless you're getting in the two packs and the like right the regular figures yeah the, the regular, regular classified now but you said the Mattels were cheaper or they're about the same it's I minutes. think they're they run roughly the same and then you have things like NECA we termed craft action figure line NECA tends to run in the $40 range 40 42 43 and then you have super 7 which is what we have here which are in the $50 range and higher about $10 more than NECA we're getting the $15 more per so that's figure double for those of you keeping track at home that's twice what you would pay for a Hasbro or Mattel product is it worth it is it what you want I will acknowledge they look great. If you like Super 7, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to change your mind. I'm not here to like, Super 7's garbage and you should stop. You're wasting your money. Blah, blah, blah. I imagine how those people talk. I'm here to offer our opinion, my opinion, as someone who has purchased Super 7 and kind of had to take a step back have always wanted really good Thundercats. Bandai started them for a little while. Mattel had the Thundercats classics, I think is what they were called. And then Super 7 took them over. But I've always wanted really good Thundercats and the only way to get them now is through Super 7. And I'm not super happy with what I'm getting, especially at $50 a figure, pre-shipping. If you haven't bought a Super 7 toy, what to expect? I'm gonna say, I don't have any Super 7 figures other than the Transformer Reaction. I have a small amount of those, but that's my only experience with Super 7, other than playing with your toys. Well, let's play. Let's, let's play. play. Super 7 started in 2001, actually, as a magazine company, covering things like Japanese toys, Japanese animation, toy culture. It was a San Francisco based company yes. and they started offering very bizarre repaints mm -hmm. of some Japanese figures. Their magazine was so successful that they ended up opening their own store mm -hmm. that sold some of those exclusives. I think it had uh, posters, t-shirts, yeah. and of course the magazine and it just and grew from there. Small batch. So whereas like Hasbro or Mattel couldn't even do this because it couldn't be profitable, this smaller company could do these small batches, these bizarre recolors, these bizarre versions of characters. They had one of those Shogun Star Wars characters. So all sorts of crazy stuff, but it was popular. People liked it. So then they began acquiring more known in the West mm -hmm. licenses. I think Star Wars was their first one. And then they got into it and they've just grown and grown and grown. And now you can get them at like Big Bad Entertainment Earth. Version. The reaction you can find almost anywhere. Yeah, Target, Walmart, uh, Barnes & Noble will sell those. Now, as far as the big figures, do you see those at 
retail very often. I haven't, but I, I don't really look for them. At least in not in our area. You don't really see Super 7. I loved my Thundercats. I loved how they looked like you just plucked them off the screen. This is my Mom Ra, which is, I think most people will agree, this is the best Super 7 Thundercats figure. And then this is my Tigra. All the others were donated for this video by yeah. our friend. We'll have to give it back. Thanks, Brett. <laughs> you see that they reuse the body for like the He-Man, Conan the Barbarian. Is this Conan? Yeah, that's that's Arnie. Is it? I guess that kind of looks like him. So what's your opinion? There you go. Sculpt. Uh, he's, well, I mean, the lining's a little, I mean, I guess that is a little Arnold. It's a little Arnold it's or a, a lot of Arnold? It's it's a bit of Arnold. He kind of has a little bit of Brad Pitt in mixed in with him. Your opinion of the sculpt is that is not dead on. Not perfectly. Like if you said, this is Brad Pitt. Mm, is okay. It, is it though? This is Brad Pitt and Arnold Schwarzenegger's child. Yeah, there you <laughs> How did that work? I want to touch his muscles. <laughs> yeah. But then look at the face on that. Didn't that look like it oh, yeah. came off the screen? That looks... Oh man, that looks perfect. And he's got the little half smile. He looks like he's about to give me a moral. Yeah. So maybe they need a little work on their sculpting for real people, but when it comes to cartoon characters, they are dead on. And I think that's what the draw is for Super 7. They look like they just walked off the screen. Mm -hmm. And the paint apps are amazing. You have very little bleed over. There's a little spot on my Mumra right there. The paint doesn't seem to scratch off very mm -hmm. easily. Even the gold on Mumra. Uh, yeah. He's, he's the cloth cape, the soft goods. This is pretty nice. He is deluxe. Now, he obviously was a lot more than $50. Yeah. He this is not a soft bed. That is definitely a soft good. <laughs> oh my god, that was horrible. <laughs> And they all come with a ton of accessories, different heads, hands, things that aren't even that significant to the character of the show. Now, check out Robin Hood. He looks like he just walked off the screen. Oh, yeah. That's really good. Look at that face. He's got that kind of excited, I'm in a Disney movie. <laughs> Any other opinions? Yeah, they're nice. Are they $50 nice? Uh, I wouldn't pay that. You wouldn't? But I'm cheap. I collect Transformers, mm -hmm. and I do pay that much for a Transformer, a, a character I wanted. You're saying adjacent to Transformers, these yes, are on the same level? Yes, but Transformers... Transformers are more expensive. I mean, it's hard to compare those two because... There's way more pieces, way more plastic, way more engineering. Way more engineering, and they're all different. Like, whereas you get this guy, and you're like, I think I'll get that Mumra. You kind of know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. Transformers aren't like that. They're all different. It's a different collecting, I guess, mentality. Yeah. My issue with Super 7 is, for one, the posability. The posability is a real issue, in my opinion. And I guess it's what you want. You said this in our last video. Do you want a toy, or do you want a statue that's kind of movable. Posable statue. What is it you want? If you are a statue that's kind of movable guy, then these are for you because they look great. If you guys are like me and I think what Kyle leans toward and you want a toy, you want something that you can actually pick up and play with and not be like, oh, don't break it. That was $60. Then these are not for you. I would avoid these. One of my issues with these is that they're hardly posable compared to what's coming out now. Even the new newest ones like this Power Ranger and Robin Hood, which are fairly new, they're not that posable. And I understand why they do that. First of all, it's more expensive. It's more engineering. It also breaks the line. So these They're all about the aesthetic. How can we cover up the angles and the joints, hide the seams? It's all about, does it look like the source material? And this one does, and he does, and Mumra really does. Like, My issue really is, let's take a Power Ranger as a perfect example. These guys are ninja warriors. They're gonna do these cool poses and kick in the air and do all this stuff. This this is about as flexible as he is. Now his hips are super flexible. He can go to his full split, but other than that, that's as far as his elbow bends. He can't do this or this. Mm -hmm. His elbow will not bend. His shoulder will not bend. Even if you took the armor off, there's a limit to that. He can't do as far a crunch or as far back as say like a classified figure. Mm -hmm. So if you want a really low kung fu karate ninja stance, they physically can't do it. If you want your Thundercats to crouch, I mean, these yeah. are anthropomorphic cat people. Mm -hmm. These are agile creatures from fake reality. <laughs> they fake can't reality? do those poses. The other issue, and I don't really see it in these figures as much, but with the Power Ranger and with the Thundercats is they have these rubbery underwear that mm -hmm. goes over the joints. And I guess that was a compromise. Yeah, we're gonna hide the seams. So we're gonna put this underwear and the way it splits, it splits right on the crotch there. What Super 7 does is it has this soft rubbery plastic. Mm -hmm. Feel his crotch. Go ahead, feel it. 
what I'm afraid of is if I do put them in a pose, see how that's bending the rubber? Mm -hmm. If I have them like that for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, is it gonna stay like that? Is it gonna lift up that rubber? Will it go back and look pristine again? I don't know. And is that worth, well, we gotta keep the silhouette. We gotta keep the lines. Let's cover up these joints and make it look better at the cost of flexibility or even the longevity of the toy. What is your opinion? Well, that, well, that goes back to what do you want? Do you want a toy? Are, are you gonna be moving this a lot? Or do you want a posable statue? Are you gonna pose them once all together? The whole team's there, put it behind glass, never touch it again. What if you wanna pose it for a few months and then go back? Oh, I'll move them again. Oh, that pose they were in for months permanently ruined his rubber underwear. Now it's always gonna flip it up on that side. It depends on the material. I mean, sometimes a hair dry it or just leave back. it. For my Ghostbuster that we did the video on, I had it in the position of firing the stream. Well, it actually bent. From gravity, just from gravity, it's a long piece. So I took the thing off and I put the figure holding it straight up. So hopefully it would bend back and it did. So that could happen, what you're saying, where it's permanently bent and that's it, it's done and it'll never go back. Do you want to take that chance? Exactly. It's like, <laughs> how much did he cost? It was $50. It was $50. So it, I don't know. I it's, it's hard for me to say because I wouldn't collect these. I don't collect these. I get some of the Super 7 reaction because I like those characters. I get the Christmas Optimus Prime. I'm going to hang on my tree this year because he's just the right size for an ornament mm -hmm. dispensing peppermint justice eat joy yeah <laughs> there you go it's hard for me to say i would i wouldn't get these especially at that price recently we got into the classifieds but they're 25 dollars yeah. and they're really good paint's not as good but it's still it's not bad yeah it's not even close to bad the faces are really good well, they don't have the multiple side. layers of paint like these do no not all over them their faces are really good you can see that those have they'll, been... they'll have gradation and stuff yeah, and, and around the eyes and everything that had multiple layers. But the suits, the arms, the armor, that's like one, two colors, bam, you're yeah. done. It's like a stamp or a tampograph or something like that. Or just molded in the color. Or just molded in the color. The way the paint budgets work. They spread it out over the line. Yeah, over that wave. And if one finger needs more paint, then they'll do that. And then that means they have less for the others. For the others, yeah. Sometimes they'll strategically pick characters. Yeah. And somebody did mention this in the comments of the last video. I want to throw it out because I we do acknowledge that the reason why these are expensive is because it costs them more money to make. Yeah, they're small batches. L small batches cost more. Mm -hmm. The paint costs mm -hmm. more. Big companies like Hasbro and Mattel can eat those costs. Yeah, they can fairly absorb easily. Those losses, yeah. yeah. Whereas a small company can't. They do a line that doesn't sell. That's detrimental. Yeah. And that's why everyone does pre-orders now. Because mm -hmm. if the pre-orders don't sell, they may cancel it after the pre-orders. And just material-wise, these are heavy. They are. So like, you just feel the difference. Now, he's yeah. bigger, of course, but it's a lot heavier. The plastic is more dense, too. So the plastic probably costs more for them. <laughs> That's some really scientific. He's way more solid. Well, he's also new. Very jiggly. Jiggly Tigra. That's what it was called in Thundercat school. Another negative is the quality assurance. And oh, really? I, I don't want to be that guy who had one negative experience and now he's blasted the whole line with that. So, because because in all honesty, Super 7 has probably fixed this mm -hmm. since then. But I had a real issue with him. This is my quote unquote third Tigra. The first one I got, the chest was completely broken. It wouldn't stay up. Mm -hmm. It would completely flop. Like you could hold it. I wish I could find it because I gave it to my kids. You could shake it like this and he'd go, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it was no friction. There was something broken. And unlike some of the joints where you can take off if you're really careful, you can't do anything to the chest. I looked it up. There's no way to bust it apart without completely destroying it. Uh, I'm going to forgive it on a $20 figure. I'm not going to forgive it on 25. a $50, $25 <laughs> figure. I'm not going to forgive that on a $50 figure. These should be darn near perfect. For $50. For $50, they should. Uh, there's a little paint thing we mentioned earlier on Mumra, a tiny little thing on Mumra, which I don't think Mumra's outfit should be perfect anyway because he's a mummy. Plus it's the bag. First one I got was floppy. Mm -hmm. Completely unusable. I emailed them. Big Bad Toy Store said we don't do reti returns. Here's another one. The second tiger they sent me uh -oh. had two left forearms. Oh, boo. So I took the correct forearm off and put it on the the new toy. And uh, God, that's nerve wracking. If you've never taken a figure apart, I'm sure people who do it all the time are like, oh, it's nothing, it's easy. No, if you've never done it, it's, it's nerve scary. You either boil it or you do it with a hairdryer and you squeeze and eh, 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 eh. I saw videos of people breaking theirs. They're just not being as careful, but I finally, uh, got that forearm off and put it back on. It 
it, surgery it is successful. It's surgery is successful. So Made I full took, recovery. It, I say it's my third one because I had to Frankenstein it, mm. but it's actually my second one. But I had to take the arm off the other one. I got two tigers that were incorrect. I've seen things where Super 7 has had a issue with QC and it's since been corrected. But gosh, as a customer, yeah, it, that's it hard. Really, it hurts. It's hard to get that trust back unless you, like me... <laughs> Just buy a ton of that product. They'll have an exclusive transformer that's super floppy, or the hips were on backwards and stuff like that, and it's all of them. It's all of them of that character, but then you'll get the next figure and it's perfect. So you tell me, I buy very few of these. Mm -hmm. I got two in a row of the same character, so maybe it was just that line, what mm -hmm. factory that one came out of. Who knows? Maybe it was just coincidence. How often does that happen? You buy a lot of Transformers in all different prices. I buy a fair few. You've seen the range mm -hmm. of a specific product. Right. So how often do you get one that's completely busted, wrong, broken in the package? Mainline, not that often. You'll get something that's wrong or put together incorrectly or piece had when it came out of the mold the plastic didn't go all the way to the end of the mold so the pieces won't fit together so they just fall apart you'll see that very rarely with a mainline figure in recent history they will make a exclusive special edition whatever whatever and one of the pieces the elbow or whatever the torso is super loose and it's on every single one they made so you cannot get a good version of that that's happened recently with one of the Dion I think his arm it's supposed to come off and it's just so loose like you can pick up the finger and just shake it and the arm just falls off and I was able to fix that with some floor polish and unlike these where you can very carefully most pieces you can snap apart mm -hmm. and put it back together Transformers you can't do that there might be yeah. something internal that's wrong and there's no way to get to it without snapping it apart right there's yeah I mean people remove pins and stuff but that's super scary and from what I've read they'll never be like they were the first time because it's friction so the pin goes through the whole in the plastic and then the friction you know it's got this big pin but to give it some strength and some tension when it moves it'll be slightly looser the second time because the pin's gone through that plastic so you fix course. one thing but you permanently mess up something else yeah just because I mean I'm sure a lot of people have done it it's oh it's tight enough but it wasn't like it was but and sometimes they use screws that's thank you for using screws because you can just unscrew it I had to fix a Dinobot one of the ratchets in the knee just completely broke and so there's one of the times where I had a mainline toy just incorrect. And I had to buy a second one uh, to fix that problem. So here's an example of the difference in posing. Now, Tommy is slightly taller, and he has the rubbery piece right there. Mm -hmm. But there it makes sense, because it's a big coat, and it's a big overlay. Whereas they're just using it to cover up the hip joints, because they want to keep that silhouette. I understand why they're doing it. To me, it's not worth it. It's not worth the potential of I think messing it's it also up. what you want. You want a toy. You want something yeah. you play with. You want something you can pose. Are you saying these things are a snow job? No, I wouldn't say that. I'd say these are not for you. They're not making these for my type of collecting. For your type of collecting. So the moral, I guess, is just know what you're getting into. Know what you're getting into. You said the quality insurance is probably better. Have you got I'm any? assuming they fixed that. Or maybe it's like CoverGirl. Talking about G.I. Joe Classifieds. A CoverGirl arm kept falling off. I saw a bunch of people talking about arm on mine was really loose. So it might have been just that factory that it mm -hmm. came out of. Or that line. And then they fixed it and it's never going to happen again. You may not ever find a CoverGirl that's right. Mm -hmm. Because once it left that factory factory then she's done or maybe they fixed it halfway through yeah. and maybe that's what happened to Tigra it was just that one guy on the line it's, before these came out I thought these were okay mm -hmm. I didn't have a complaint and then once these came out I kind of changed my whole perspective on action figure collecting but it always oh, it goes back to what you said it's what you want mm -hmm. compare that to like NECA these things this huge gargoyle okay it's not as big as Mumra but he's He's $40, $38, I think, for just the basic original Goliath. He's more flexible than Tommy. Mm. He has the double joints. My issue with him is that he only has the one joint in the neck and not a second one here. Again, probably to keep the aesthetic. But it is, because all the gargoyles have long hair, they're always stuck in this very aggressive... <laughs> They're always bucking up on people, no matter what. But again, feel how heavy that is. Oh yeah, he's heavy. 
He's heavier than Mumra. The other issue is if you want that IP, right. there's only a few people making it, yep. unless it's Ninja Turtles. Yeah. <laughs> unless and it's Ninja Turtles, because everybody makes Ninja Turtles. Everyone's <laughs> making Ninja Turtles. The moral of the story is buyer beware. Know what you're getting. Do you want a movable statue, or do you want something that you're going to play with, move around? If you scratch something, are you going to freak out? Not that I want to scratch even these, mm -hmm. but it's like, oh, it's $25, I'll buy another one, I'll switch it out. Ah, ah, there's $50, <laughs> I gotta buy another $50. $50 one and oh geez they just sold out of them so now I gotta find off the market it's like oh. the other thing is these are so good these classifieds are just awesome like look at it look he can He's be a prancing, prancing ballerina yeah, prancing that, through a winter day <laughs> super seven are awesome but just know what you're getting know what you're in for they're expensive they look great they do not move well because this sure video is sponsored by super seven <laughs> I wish. I w Change our mind, Super yeah. 7. Send us some free stuff. Change our mind. Change his mind. Thanks, bro. Send me stuff. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Hope that you found this video helpful. Just things to think about. Thank you so much. If you would do us a favor, if you made it this far, give that little subscribe button a little tickle, a little poke. Uh, ring the bell if you want to, if you feel we've earned your subscription. Also, we have our own YouTube store. Yeah. You basically pick a design and put it on anything. Yeah, perch that merch. There's a link in the description, and also, if you go to our YouTube page, you can click on store. Do it! Yeah, now, get out of here, you crazy kids. And buy some action figures. Yeah. Any ones you want. Don't let us sway you. No. Yeah, let us sway you. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Little bit. Little bit. <sighs> Two in the can. <laughs> Uh, but you are, you are, uh, so, um, uh, and the, uh, um, uh, 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 and, uh, 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 you know, I, I, you know, uh, what is it? I, I, I was gonna say, uh, 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 they, I think like the, uh, um, uh, and, uh, uh, right. You can like, and I was like, oh man, uh, uh, you know, you know. No, I was just I was just